Uh, here's the doctor that uh, has been with us for a long time, Dr. Carl Wurtz from Glendale, California. Uh, he, this is what he says. Uh, hey, Zeev, I did it. Lateral window sinus lifting, flying solo. It went really well. I did have a tear, but easily repaired it. I even went for extra bonus points to see if I could get some crestal growth vertically and horizontally. Good for you. Your sinus lift teaching was instrumental in my confidence to pass through this milestone. Thank you. Thank you, Carl, for sharing your excellent sinus lift with us. Here's Dr. Phil Mendelovitz from Los Angeles. Thank you for guiding me in sinus lifting. You taught that proper planning prevents poor performance. And I know, I now know to lift and place implants where I couldn't before. And we have doctors also with very little experience, uh, like Dr. Uh, Desai. I did a crestal sinus lift at 14 yesterday morning, and he encountered actually a complication. I was concerned about a slight perforation seen in the CBCT. What would you do? Uh, patient was prescribed augment, and he shares what he did for, to manage the complication. Thank you for mentoring me. Okay, so if you are performing sinus lifts without mentorship and without guidance, you're putting yourself at a, at a disadvantage. Very important. So um, what we need to do is figure out what the risks are, and I'm going to teach you how to mitigate the risks and when, even more importantly, when not to take them. If you can avoid a problem before you even get into that, okay? So we like falling into a, a pit or a hole in the ground and just avoiding the stepping into it, that's even better. And today is where we start. So consider the surgical master teaching as your safety belt or safety net, whichever you want. Safety is important. I want you to be successful, but I don't want you to do stupid things and push the envelope and get into trouble. So let's get into the teaching. Let's learn about how to find simple and predictable sinus lifting, how to perform a sinus lift with safety. I'll share with you the steps. Uh, let's learn to identify and avoid the risky ones. And altogether, how to double your implant opportunity by adding sinus lifts to your menu. And I'm going to start with a dilemma. Dilemma number one in sinus lifting. Let's start from like first year. When do you need a sinus lift? Confusion is very common among dentists. I was confused myself when I started my training. Like I know about sinus lifting. I know how to do it technically. But under what indication? What implant length do you need in the posterior maxilla? When I started over 20 years ago, you needed to place implants that were 30 millimeters long. And if you didn't, it was uh, a crime. You had to lift and th there was no other option. Now, now we know that we have the same success if you go over 10 millimeters, same level of success. But when the sinus gets closer and closer, it actually becomes too short for comfort. And in many cases, it's obvious. There's just not enough bone to place in implants. And because of that confusion, I wanted to share with you some simple rules. So when do you need a sinus lift?